lecture I'm going over now is by Carl Menninger, an eminent psychiatrist who was very uh, prominent in the, especially in the 1960s, and he was pretty well known for. Uh, I suppose you've heard of the the Menninger Clinic, and but he was actually well known for uh, a book uh, called The Crime of Punishment, and. Uh, I want you to understand that the expression the crime of punishment, the crime of punishment is in fact um, an, a play on words, right? Because we talk about the punishment of crime. And so what you need to understand is uh, why does Menninger, why does Menninger believe that punishment uh, as delivered uh, in America especially uh, is criminal. Now, he published this book in 1968, uh, and uh, he was suggesting that Americans seem to be obsessed with crime, especially crimes of certain kinds, uh, the uh, bank robberies especially, and you can see this, of course, in movies. You can also see crimes associated with organized crime, with the uh, mafia, for example. Uh, just think of the numerous novels and movies that have been based on uh, organized crime, right, including The Godfather, most famously, but also in the and think about 19th century as far as crimes, uh, Frank and Jesse James. Think of, for example, uh, in the 20th century, uh, John Dillinger. I mean, one could go on and on. So there, there are a number of criminals and a number of crimes uh, that have really fascinated Americans. And yet, Menninger says, even though Americans are often fascinated by crime, they also uh, claim to condemn it, and they say it's awful, and they claim that uh, we need harsh punishment, and they say justice requires this. Menninger, of course, was a psychiatrist. Menninger believed that most habitual criminals have psychological and psychiatric problems, and these problems must be addressed by professionals, and especially psychiatrists. But, of course, they could also be addressed uh, with uh, psychologists, and they could be addressed with licensed clinical social workers. In fact, he talked about a, um, a therapeutic team. And he talked about the need for, uh, and the therapeutic team could include even uh, family members and friends of uh, incarcerated uh, criminals. But, it, but his idea was that criminals need to be re-educated. They may need academic education. Many of them do. Many of them are functionally illiterate. Uh, but they also need to be uh, educated uh, or re-educated when it comes to thinking in certain ways uh, so that they'll learn to defer gratification, so that they'll be more goal-oriented, uh, so that they'll be less impetuous. So it, he thought that, that, uh, that in, for most criminals uh, to uh, get better, they need to be required to be um, in programs with uh, professionals, and especially psychiatrists. Uh, and again, because he, he believed that most habitual criminals have psychiatric and psychological problems that need to be addressed within a context in which the criminals are forced into treatment. Okay, so, but here's my point. Menninger says that although Americans seem to be fascinated by crime, and, and certain crime anyway, and certain criminals, the fact remains they also like taking the stance of being very harsh and saying criminals deserve to be punished and often deserve to be punished harshly. So Menninger wanted to replace the traditional view of punishment as retribution with the view of therapy uh, and with the view of reformation. At the center of his point of view is the idea of Menninger's point of view is that what we need to do is to uh, have a context in which criminals are respected as persons. Their crimes aren't respected, but they're respected as fallible persons who made mistakes and who need help. And they need to be able to think differently so that they be, become different persons by the time they leave prison. And so they will also be armed with uh, skills, marketable skills, so that they'll be law-abiding, uh, productive citizens. And Menninger believed that most uh, criminals are capable of reformation if we devoted enough resources 
and time and energy to reform them. He says the problem is that most Americans, however, have a retributist mindset. Now, I'm going to get more into the theory of retribution next time because uh, there is a prominent author of both fiction and nonfiction who is uh, uh, who wrote a contrasting uh, essay, a contrasting essay with Menninger's. Okay, remember, uh, Menninger's essay is is the crime of punishment. Uh, and managers defending what he calls the therapeutic theory. And then we're going to be talking later about, and when we talk about the next essay, we're going to talk about C.S. Lewis and his uh, defending uh, the, uh, one of the, the main theory that uh, Menninger is criticizing, the theory of retribution or retributivism. But, but see, you know, what is retributivism? Because remember, Menninger is for therapy, but he's also opposed to retribution or retributivism. The theory of uh, retribution or retributivism uh, is a theory about punishment. And what it says is that criminals uh, should be punished because and to the extent that they deserve it. So the concept of desert is essential to a retribution. So, lo so what does all of this imply? Well, let me give you a broader context. The retributist says that most criminals uh, intentionally break the law. They choose to try to get a, a, a benefit to which they're not entitled. In other words, that most people are following these laws, the criminals are breaking them, and so they're not playing by the rules. There's a sense in which they are, um, if you like, committing, uh, if you like, a crime against society and therefore they've incurred a debt. They've incurred a debt. And, uh, be, and to help uh, pay that debt, they need to be punished. So the idea is that punishment is the payment for the debt that is created by the intentional violation of the law. You have heard criminals say, who have spent time in prison, that they have paid their debts to society, right? I know, I know people have heard that. That's retributism. When you say that uh, some criminal deserved the punishment, was asking for the punishment, when you say we should punish only the guilty, okay, when you if you say that uh, that cr the crime uh, the punishment should fit the crime, that's also from the theory of retribution. Okay, remember the theory of retribution says we should punish only the guilty, we should punish them because they're guilty. We should punish them in accordance with the nature and severity of their uh, crime. Okay, and it takes for granted that most people, most of the time, are responsible and accountable for their actions, and that that it is appropriate to treat them in accordance with their actions. And just as sometimes people are worthy of awards or rewards for going beyond the call of duty, so too the retributist argues people deserve punishment for failing to live up to certain standards. Okay, well that's more or less retributism in a nutshell. But what's happening is uh, you have uh, Menninger, Dr. Menninger, psychiatrist, who sees the theory of, of retribution as uh, vindictive, as vengeful. Okay, now some people say eye for an eye, and I could go into this, but let me just say that at the time, people were talking about eye for an eye and Hammurabi's code. Uh, someone could knock someone's eye out and then, you know, or blind someone and then be put to death. So originally, uh, eye for an eye, even though I suppose it could be taken quite literally, the idea, though, embodied in it was the idea of uh, that the punishment should fit the crime. Okay? So... Uh, even though people have come to regard that as a negative thing, eye for an eye, I just want you to understand that within the context of punishment, it was saying the punishment should fit the crime and that there should be an eye for an eye but, and not uh, that someone should be put to death for blinding someone in an, one eye, let's say. But anyway, so my point is uh, I'm hoping right now that, you, that things are clear about the theory of retribution, but I do want you to understand that um, that manager sees retributism in more or less a completely negative light, 
he sees it as vindictive, as vengeful. He believes that it doesn't really work very well, that most people who are put into prison with the idea of making them suffer uh, end up becoming very angry. Uh, it is true that the recidivism rate, the, the rate at which there are repeat offenders in the United States, uh, is pretty high, especially for certain crimes. And I think on the whole, it's, it's higher than, let's say, sw in Sweden, which has a more, uh, I suppose, they're, they're more into reformation. I think that's probably fair to say. But, of course, the Swedish population is very largely homogeneous compared to American population. And there are a lot of uh, differences, I suppose, between the United States and, and Sweden. But I will say that it's probably fair to say that that Sweden is more reform-oriented uh, than America. America is more into the retributivist model. Uh, but in any event, uh, I will say this, that Menninger believed that the retributivist model is bad. It's morally bad, he believes. It's vindictive, vengeful, and he thinks that it's self-defeating and that uh, very often, if not usually, uh, that treating cr uh, criminals who are caught in in prison as uh, deserving punishment is that uh, doing that more often than not uh, makes things worse, they become hardened and very often they return to prison. Okay. So anyway, so that, that tells you a lot about Menninger. Menninger believed that if we spent more efforts in reforming criminals, if we concentrated on getting to think differently, getting them to defer gratification, if we help them with marketable skills, if we helped them with uh, their anger, if we uh, that and we had a therapeutic model, and that could include various meds. It could also include uh, psychotherapy. It could include occupation, giving helping people develop occupational skills. It can include all that. Okay, but the key thing for us to remember is that Menninger believed that our focus on the criminal justice system is misguided and that instead of concentrating so heavily on uh, giving people what they deserve, which again is a retributivist model of punishment, we need to replace that with what he called the therapeutic uh, theory of punishment. Or not really, it's, it's some people well, say punishment, I'm speaking a little loosely because technically he, I don't think he really even regarded it as punishment, but, but the therapeutic theory of dealing with uh, criminals and responding to them and he wanted that to displace the uh, the retributive view of uh, punishment. Okay, and, and Manager calls his theory the therapeutic theory. Okay, whereas uh, a, cri a critic of that uh, theory, namely C.S. Lewis, called it the uh, the humanitarian theory. But it, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about Lewis next time. And uh, it's going to be easier to understand Lewis after this lecture because, in a sense, I've already given you uh, a background for understanding the retributive theory. And Lewis was a big defender of the retributive theory. And uh, I'm going to talk much more about that in the next lecture. But again, here, what are the, what are the key takeaway points? Menninger was a psychiatrist. Menninger believed that our emphasis on giving people what they deserve, namely criminals, uh, is vindictive, that it's vengeful, it's self-defeating, uh, and it's, it's not good for reforming criminals. He believed that it would be, in the long run at least, we would be much better off if instead of focusing on giving people what they deserve in the sense of punishing them, if we regarded criminals as having made mistakes and as needing the uh, if you like, the mandatory intervention of uh, professionals and especially psychiatrists so that criminals can be reformed, re-educated, so that when criminals leave prison they'll be in many ways different persons from the persons they were when they entered prison. Okay, so I want you to understand uh, manager as wanting reformation to, and secondly, deterrence, in other words, discouraging people from committing crime. But the, at the core of what he wanted was reformation, reforming criminals, helping transform them into productive law-abiding citizens. Yes, he also wanted deterrence and he wanted to discourage crime. 
and he believed that the traditional view of punishment, which I, I think is fair, we could say that it's retributivist, uh, he believed that that is morally unacceptable, that it's vindictive, vengeful, and ultimately normally self-defeating, often making matters worse and hardening criminals instead of reforming them. And that's pretty much what I want you to know about Menninger and his essay, The Crime of Punishment, which is taken from his book of the same title, which was published in 1968.